In 2002, Martha Coolidge became the first woman elected president of the Directors Guild of America. Born and raised in New Haven, Connecticut, Coolidge is one of this country's most versatile directors and one of its most commercially successful. She has well over 30 films and television programs to her directorial credit. There was a time early in film history when women succeeded and even thrived. In the teens and early 1920s, women directors found much work before the field was dominated by men. I'm disturbed by the fact that there were more women in the film business and then less women in the film business. I mean, that, that's a very disturbing thing because then you get the feeling that it can go away. Not until the 1970s did the number of female directors increase in the film industry. Even then, they remained marginalized. Martha Coolidge was born in New Haven in 1946. A distant cousin of President Calvin Coolidge, Martha was the eldest of five children. Both of her parents were architects and fostered a love for the arts and humanities. From a young age, Martha was involved in the performing arts. During her teenage years, she performed and directed with the Blackfriars, a theater company in Cheshire, Connecticut. Coolidge studied animation at Rhode Island School of Design and filmmaking at New York University. She encountered professional gender biases while attending NYU. When I applied to film school, they said, you can't be a director. You can't name five women directors in the world. There are no women directors. And I could only name one at that time, Agnes Varda. That's the only one I knew. I'm now at this age, and at this point in my career, very aware of how much timing and luck were involved in me ever getting to this point. As a young woman, Coolidge was surrounded by strong women, including her mother. Well, my mother's history of what sh she did of going to college and then going to graduate school and becoming, you know, the, the first wave of women to go through Harvard Graduate School of Design certainly sets the stage for Martha to do what she did with her career. Persistence and experience also played a significant role in Coolidge's success. Coolidge had been making films for 18 years before the release of her first commercial film, Valley Girl. Her career hasn't been that smooth. It hasn't been like everything went her way. In fact, it's been, she's had quite a few difficult times. But she persisted at it, and she kept doing it in spite of whatever went wrong. During the nearly two decades leading up to Valley Girl, Coolidge directed a number of independent documentaries. Old Fashioned Woman was independently funded and filmed in her family home in Cheshire. Here, Coolidge wanted to tell a story of another strong woman in her life, her grandmother. Not a Pretty Picture, a film which she wrote and directed in 1975, was a semi-autobiographical docudrama examining the difficult topic of date rape. In 1982, Francis Ford Coppola recommended Coolidge for her first feature film, photo play. Her association with Coppola gave her the opportunity to direct Valley Girl in 1983. She cast a young Nicolas Cage in the leading role. The film depicted California's trend-setting youth culture of the early 1980s. Coolidge brought a woman's perspective to a script written by two men. I keep staring right at it. Gross, what's the move? See what happens. Oh, sure. Tell me all about it. Two years later, Coolidge was asked to direct the big budget teen comedy Real Genius. A then unknown Val Kilmer took the leading role. The movie went on to become a cult classic. Let's go skating! It ice turned out so great! Yeah, it worked, didn't it? How did you do it? Oh, sure. I tell you, then you tell somebody else, and the next thing you know, we're in the middle of another ice age. Yeah! 
Following the success of Valley Girl and Real Genius, Coolidge became typecast as a director of films for teenage audiences, prompting the New York Times to write, when will they let this woman out of high school? Coolidge broke from the teenage genre with Rambling Rose in 1991. The film, like much of her later work, has a strong female character at its heart. Coolidge worked to get Rambling Rose produced for more than five years. When finally made, it was lauded for its ability to convey a sense of both place and time. The film starred Laura Dern, Diane Ladd, and Robert Duvall. Rambling Rose earned two Golden Globe and Oscar nominations for Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress, as well as winning three Spirit Awards for Best Supporting Actress, Best Picture, and Best Director. Now, Rose. You are not going to fire this girl. Not for an innocent thing like having boyfriends. Not while I have a breath in my body, a strength in my little finger to squeeze the trigger and shoot you with the truth right between the eyes. Also notable for its strong, complex female lead is the 1999 biographical HBO film introducing Dorothy Dandridge. The film starred Halle Berry as Dandridge who was the first black actress to win a Best Actress nomination from the Academy in 1954. That Carmen Jones snatched him from me, and I'm lost over what to do about it. For her work on this film, Coolidge was nominated as Best Director by her peers in the Directors Guild. The film also won many awards, including five Emmys and a Golden Globe. On to come back to his happy hearth and home. Tell me what to do. I'm Cindy Lou. The hell you are. In 2000, Coolidge was once again <laughs> given a Best Director nomination <laughs> by the Directors Guild for her work on If These Walls Could Talk, too. Since her early days in documentary filmmaking, Coolidge has earned a reputation for making movies that appeal to a variety of audiences. The breadth of her work is easily illustrated by films such as Out to Sea, starring two grumpy old men, Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau, The Prince and Me, starring Julia Stiles, and Lost in Yonkers, starring Richard Dreyfuss and Mercedes Rule, a film adapted for screen from Neil Simon's successful Broadway play. Hey, Artie, said you would back me up here. Come on, you promised. Back you up with what? With the restaurant? With the money? Is that what this guy is asking you? No, about? Louis, he wants more than that. What could possibly be more than that? It's me! He wants me! He wants to marry me! I want to marry him! A year later, Coolidge followed Lost in Yonkers with another movie depicting a determined and passionate woman. The title role of Angie went to Gina Davis, who had the task of playing a single mother trying to find her place in the world. I thought that the part, which is of this girl who has enormous problems and runs away from her family and, you know, does some terrible things, uh, was a very brave part for her to play. Now say it to me again. I can't go out with you no more, man. You can't go out with me no more? You're pregnant with my baby. We're getting married and you can't go out with me no more? Coolidge also directed two episodes of a recent pop culture phenomenon, Sex and the City, a show that takes an up-close and personal look at the sex and love lives of four unique women living in New York. Okay, now the tough question. Should you sleep with them one last time? Exactly. Going out of business sex, what do we think? No. Okay, quick draw, give it a second here. No. We like each other. We respect each other. It could be nice. Romantic. Hmm. No. You had sex with Steve. Uh-huh. Action! 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 In an industry that today is still dominated by men, Coolidge continues to break new ground. In 2002, she became the first woman president of the Directors Guild of America the first and only woman president in its nearly 70-year history. 
That's it. That's what you should do when you When I first directed my first film, I felt this is what I meant to do. And I never said I can't be a director because I'm a woman. I did know that it was a very, very difficult thing to be a director. As a pioneer woman filmmaker, Coolidge has hope for the young women that follow in her footsteps. You can do this to hopefully create a time when women are not having to think of themselves as women and not being limited by their gender in what they're able to do. Uh, it makes me very excited for them, hoping that it will be a freer time and a time when we'll all appreciate women more than we do today. You won't hurt my feelings. Just give it a yeah. What too sweet? What is it? I don't know. I found it in one of the labs. Oh. Ah. Relax. It's just yogurt. Oh. Oh, so good to see you, sweetheart. <laughs> you look wonderful. Do I? I lost ten pounds. Yeah, well, it looks great. Really? Because they put it back on a month ago. 